Hello, Brother Sewing and Crafting family. Angela Wolf here. How's it going? So we are wrapping up our week with super fun DIY projects. Did you do these this week? Okay, these were so much fun. And I saw some of you tagged me in a few of these, which are really adorable. So these are really fun. Now we did this on the Stellaire using the matrix feature. I kind of showed you on the Luminaire or if you didn't have the matrix feature, how to do this as well. But after I started playing with this, it's a little addictive. So I made some more. <laughs> They're all in the dryer. These I just got out of the dryer. So if you miss this episode, this was on Brother's show this week. We made little wine holders. They're so cute. But that matrix feature is a little addicting. And as I played with it a little more, some of you said, well, can't you just take the whole letters and everything and do the matrix? Well, yes, you can. But if you do that, then you have the same letter for all of them. So just so you know, but you can take a whole bunch of shapes and put them together and do those in the matrix. Then you only have to add your letters. So that was a lot of fun. So if you missed that, go back and see that. It's on Brothers YouTube and Facebook pages. So I see you all rolling in. You know, by the way, I just love it when I'm getting the cameras loaded and I can see all of you already here. So I've got some more fun projects for you today. I've got, I'm pretty sure that's not proper English, but I have. <laughs> uh, but I also got in a little trouble again because when I'm doing these shows, I'm also creating instead of just hosting and it gets a little addictive. Not only the matrix feature, but all the other tools. So today we're going to have print moda and the still air, and we're going to have tapering stitches. So if you have the luminaire, you also have tapering stitches. And if you don't have either of those, I'm still going to show you a lot of fun stuff. Great inspiration. All right. So all oh, one last thing before I get rolling. So many of you have shared all of these great pictures of your bags your grocery bags. So I'm gonna to try to get brother's permission. I have to ask first, but I'm gonna to try to get their permission to have a little video with all of them. So if you have not posted a picture with your grocery bag or sent it to me via social media somehow, a lot of people sent it through Facebook Messenger, uh, do that for me, okay? And I will find out if I can add those to a video. And if I can't, I'll come up with another way to share them. Maybe a big billboard because <laughs> they were amazing, absolutely amazing. And so many of you went way above and beyond what I even showed. Yeah, I have seen beautiful embroidery, monograms. Hey, that pocket on the inside definitely was a golden yes. Everyone loved that. So today I'm going to give you a little more inspiration to do some home deck and use your tools that you have. So you ready to go? Looks like everybody's here, sounds fantastic. And I can see all of your comments and questions. If I don't answer them right away, it's because I'm way over there, but we'll get to it. All right, so do you see what's on the table? Hmm, yeah. Do you remember a friend of mine made that beautiful, <laughs> Alice, I hope that you are not upset that I'm sharing this all over the world, but uh, made me this beautiful table runner. And I was thinking, I wanna add some other things to it, to the table to have fun. So that's where these came in. Although these, these do match, they're just a little dark. So I was thinking this side matches, but what about taking a photo of that, sending it over to Print Moda, creating some new fabric, and then doing the tapering stitches. See where I'm going with that? Yeah, this is gonna be fun. So I'll take you over to the table. And in the meantime, say hi to all your friends. It's always so nice to see the whole crew in here. And I'll take this down so you can see what I'm doing. So I've already played with this a little bit, but I'm going to let you see everything just in case. Oh, Julie said she's been using Matrix to make freestanding lace. That sounds exciting. Yeah, by the way, if you're using the Matrix feature, are you using it for patches? What are you using it for? Okay, meet you over here at the table. I've got my nice loud boots on today. So you'll hear me like a horse walking through here. I'm going to show you how I did this for those that want to know. This is what I created from taking a photo of this. Look at this. So there's more. <laughs> there's always more. 
Okay, so I'll do this with you so you can see how this works. And then we'll go to this delayer and start sewing. So this is the one I just did. That's this one. This is how it came out. See that? But you're probably thinking, well, I want to see how it works. So let me just bring you a little closer and I will get my... There you go. That's a little better. You can see that pretty good, I think. There's no glare that I can see. Okay, so I already printed this one. So let's start over. Let me log into my Art Spirit app. I'm gonna click done. 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 Okay, starting all over. And some of you requested yesterday, you said, I wish you would do more with Art Spirit. Well, don't worry, we've got plenty of that coming. Okay, so if you haven't downloaded the app, it's Art Spirit. You can't miss it, it's on uh, either devices. Android, iPhone. You can also download it to a tablet. So on here, I want to click on new. I'm doing this upside down. So um, now you can either do design editor or geometric patterns. I did the geometric patterns. So I've already, in case you missed it, you can click on any of these up here. I clicked on print, printing, and then pick your size. Hmm, what size should we do? How about let's do something a little bigger. Uh, letter landscape. So then maybe it'll take up some of this excess. I don't need a huge piece because I'm just making little, well, I could actually do a couple of these and quilt some napkins. <laughs> Did you hear that, Patty? I might actually quilt, like real quilting, except for if you all watched my live show yesterday, you know I'm quilting a skirt right now, but it's a different kind of quilting. So when I look in here, this is a photo that I took. Oops, let me go back. Um, hold on, I'm doing this backwards, so let me just get this again. Design editor, done. Okay. I'm gonna go into my camera roll and see what pictures, oh, you can see all the pictures I took the last few days. There is the picture that I took. So I literally just, and this is how easy it is, guys. Hold my phone up here like this, lifted it up, and took a photo. But of course, I had it level so I could get the whole thing in there. All right, now we'll go back into Art Spira. All right. I'm clicking on the geometrics. Let's go back into our images, see what I have. So this will bring up different designs. You see that design right there? If you don't want that, then don't go into the geometric part. So when I click done, this is the button down here that we played with a little bit with the one for the grocery bag. So this is the one I printed. And that is this one that showed up. Now, check this out. As I click these different triangles, it gives me different options. So it has all the colors and all the designs here and mashes them up. Oh, that one's cool. That one's kind of, I don't know, iridescent. So I already have a green one and I'd love to have some orange in there. Ooh. So you could actually print one of each of these sew them together and it would totally coordinate with my table runner. Alice, you had no idea that this was going to uh, cause so much creativity. That's really cool. Has kind of the same design as this, but using the, okay, so that's right now, it's either this one or that one. Okay, vote in the comments and I can see all of your comments on Facebook and YouTube. This is number one, and that's number two. Iridescent, or what do you call that, star? Number one, or number two? Which one should we print? And it has to coordinate, I'm coming back over to you so you get this. I'm gonna print two pieces today, so it has to coordinate with this one right here. So number one, number two, I see a lot of twos. Oh, I see a lot of ones showing up. 
So number two kind of had the same print, the same design as this. I mean, I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. One or two. So now this is going to go to the print moda to print. This is not on the Stellaire, just to be clear. But I'm going to take this to the Stellaire and then add some sewing to it. What do you think, guys? Number one or two? You can see I even tested some stitching on the corner. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I'm thinking, Colleen, I need some orange in there. I see a lot of number twos. Brother Social, what do you think? What's the... What's the vote today? Hey, Alan, we're doing lots of fun stuff. We are designing fabric, and then we're going to take it to the Stellaire and add some tapering stitches. Uh, we got number twos. We got ones. We've got... <laughs> Anne says she changes from two to one. Do I need to show you guys again? So number one was the one that's kind of iridescent. Looked really cool. And number two almost matched this, but had some orange. So it would coordinate quite nicely. <laughs> brother says they see a lot of twos. All right, brother social. We're going with number two. Okay, I'll meet you back over there. So, number two it is. And assuming there's no gremlins in my studio, click the check mark. You can change the size up here too if you wanted a different size. Now, this is a button that I did not use with. Uh, the piece that I printed to match my bag. Remember the grocery bag? It's right here. And this is really important. So this is just kind of the plain colors. If I want it really bright like that, that's what I should have done for the bag. So I'm going to print a new one for that anyways, because it was a little lighter than what my fabric was. So you have all these options right here to even change the hue, tone, color. Ooh, that's really bright. I'm going to go with chrome. All right, check mark. That looks pretty good, right? I think so. All right, now you click on done. And why don't we save it? Let's go ahead and save it. We're going to call it napkin. Uh, I think this is my fifth one I've printed. I've been playing all day with this. <laughs> uh, the only problem is I never get anything done. And that's that could be a problem. OK, so it's saved. Now it goes here. There's your printer. I've already have this hooked up. I should be able to click print, click OK, and let's go check it out. Thanks to Patty. Oh, it's still loading. The internet is slow today. Come on. Print. I have the printer all ready for you over here. We'll hear it. All right, let me go grab the phone. I don't think I'm using that much Wi-Fi that it shouldn't go through. It's still sending. All right. While it's sending, which of course it's going to do that because we're live. I literally just printed five pieces. Maybe I wore it out. <laughs> no, that's a joke. Uh, so it's sending. Once it goes there, I'll pick it up. There's the printer. In the meantime, while it's printing, there's, I have the other piece of green and the piece that we did last week to use the tapering stitches, all right? Oh, that's interesting, Teresa. Well, my internet's good, except I'm on it, so maybe that's part of it. <laughs> oh, that'd be cool. Take a picture of the dress form and make a matching little bag. That'd be cute. Thanks, Teresa. <laughs> All right, well, while that's loading, I'll watch for it, wait for it, wait for it. And then let's go over and get ready to do some tapering stitches. So again, if you missed last, uh, last week on Tuesday's show, we did all of these. And now we're trying to find stuff to match as well. So it's all about home decor for the fall. All right, I'm just gonna click cancel and hit print again. Now it's going faster. All right, let's go to the table and work on other things. And when it's finished printing, printing, we'll go get it. All of a sudden we hear this noise, right? Okay, 
So I'm going to get this out of the way for now. So now we have two pieces that we printed. This piece, the one that will be coming out in just a moment. And then the other thing is, remember this fabric that we used on Tuesday? I've got tearaway sticky back stabilizer on there. Yeah, so that one, just making sure I'm on the Wi-Fi. Uh, this one, I'm also gonna take a picture with and make the leaves a little bit more muted. So it'll be kind of a, a brown with a soft gold instead of like super shiny gold. And then I'll be able to see my stitches a little better on there. All right. I'm just going back in. I'm just starting over. I might just have to reopen the app because I've been playing on it a lot <laughs> this morning. So on this, we want to do tapering stitches. I thought it'd be kind of fun to do it on this. See this green that I have here? So this is a cotton fabric. And because I printed and left the sides open, technically I could do a nice, some of the tapering stitches around it. I don't know, I could, have, I could play with it a little bit. Now I already started here, which kind of messes up the whole sides, but I wanna show you how this works. So if we wanna do stitches around this, or do you wanna do a few rows and have them evenly spaced? Totally up to you. You will need to put um, a backing on this though. Now this did, this does come with that plastic backing. I did this on purpose to show you. And then you peel it away. Why well, try to just stitch through it to see what happens? Well, guess what happens? The plastic isn't gonna go away. So you don't wanna just take it off of the printer and start stitching through it. I highly would not recommend that. All right? Any questions so far? So here's my handy dandy stabilizer. And since I'm just gonna be stitching on the green part, trying to find some heavy things to throw on here so I can grab the rotary cutter. I'm at a different table than yesterday. So you know what that means. Everything's at the old table. All right, here we go. So one side of this, this is embroidery stabilizer. One side feels like paper, the other side is sticky. I'm gonna give it a little crease to keep this in place. As I start to pull that away, just get your fabric and align it right there. And then slide the rest open. And it just sticks right to it. All right, there you go. It looks great. So we have two right now that we can play with. And both of these, this is the wrong side of the quilt. Both of these will match gorgeously on here and on this side. Voila. The brown is kind of just, it's in just little pieces of this one. So it's kind of a little additive. This one definitely matches. There's enough colors going on here. I just love the owls and I thought that was fun how they, I don't know if you can see really closely in here. The owls are right here. They almost look like little ghosts. They're itsy bitsy little guys. They got squashed into that little section. And then of course the pumpkins. Yeah, really fun. So in those triangles that you see, it actually grabs just a couple colors and then transforms it into a piece. So you end up with like 12 options. That's not so bad. All right, let's head to the sewing machine. Any questions so far? Uh, Teresa, does the printer fabric shrink when washed and dried? Well, first of all, I haven't washed and dried it yet, so I can't give you an affirmative, but I am gonna take a square. So this is how you'll be able to tell it's cotton. So I'm going to just guess 
this is a guess, this is not official brother, but I'm going to guess that cotton shrinks. I mean, I know cotton shrinks, so I'm going to guess that it will shrink a little bit. Uh, but I, what I'm going to do is take a small square and cut two squares, and I will throw one in the wash and dryer. One, I want to see, you know, how well the ink stays. I've already pressed this, so gave it a really good steam press, which kind of sets the dye a little bit. But I'll take two swatches, one throw it in the wash and dryer, one not, and see the difference when they come out. I'll share that with you next week. How's that? But cotton typically shrinks. So unless it is pre-shrunk, you might have a problem. Oh, thanks, Jackie. All right, ready? Oh, Dorothy, you're in my neck of the woods, somewhere in the state of Michigan. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. All right, so let's head to the sewing machine. And first, I'm just going to walk you through some of these steps in case you're totally new to some of these features. All right. So this is the XJ2, which has sewing and embroidery versus the XE2, which we were on last week or on Tuesday, and that has embroidery only. So on here, I just want to recap what we did yesterday, but a little bit more detailed. So yesterday, or oh, I get every day's like this week, the last show, I should say, the last show. On here, we chose something like this as the outline. All right. I know I wanted this to be about three inches wide. Let's make it a little larger. And for those that said, I really wish we could just do all of it at the same time. Well, you kind of can. So let me show you how. Now I'll click add. I say kind of because you can't do, change your letters after you save this. I tried that a few times. So pick something cool. That's kind of like Christmassy. I like that. Make it a little smaller. And maybe you want to add, I don't know. Since we're going into the Christmas, how big is this little Santa guy? I don't think we can fit him in there. He's five by three. How big is this? Eight by seven. Hmm. I want a tiny. <laughs> oh my gosh, these are so cute. Oh, let's just make it bigger. Who cares? All right, so let's take that little guy and go in here, click size. I'm going to use this right here, which will also change the density so I can make it a lot smaller than normal. Hey, that's pretty good. All right, so let's go ahead and make these a little bigger. I want it to go around this maybe oblong. I'm giving you some more ideas for your coasters, all right, or things to throw around the table. Okay, that's fun. Now we need to do the same thing to this. I just need to make sure that this will go around it. I've been staring at the computer screen most of the morning writing pattern directions, and it's so fun when I go to this, the brother machines because they're so user-friendly. They're just like the computers. All right, so there's our three. I'm not going to be able to fit too many in there, though, right? So if I click select all, you'll notice when I click select all, the things that you cannot do are grayed out. One of them being the matrix feature, right? So if I just click on here and get rid of that, I'll just say individual, click OK. Now click matrix. See how it just takes the last design that you worked on. If you want to use them all, and this was a little tricky yesterday, but I got it. Click OK. It's grayed out. Just touch the screen. I just touched the screen. I didn't change anything else. And now click the matrix. Oh, it's not doing it. It totally did it yesterday. OK, hold on. <laughs> OK. Maybe I just got lucky. 
I think I just got lucky. I'll have to go back and check my steps because I was able to, to save all the designs except for the letter and it turned out super cool. All right, hold that thought. We'll go back to the matrix later. Let's go into the sewing side. On the sewing side, here's the tapering. And it's right here where you can see that. Now, if for any reason you have your machine set up where, and I just learned this, <laughs> thanks to Cheryl's clarification, see this knob right here that's a speed button? If you actually use this for the width of your stitch, which you can set up your machine that way in the menu section, uh, width control right here. See that? It's on page one. If you have that on and you try to use one of these tapering stitches, it's not going to work. See how this is grayed out right here? And why is it not going to work? Because you have your width set where this controls it. Did you even know your machine could do that, by the way? So if you were doing a decorative stitch, you can use that. So I don't want that on. So if for any reason you're looking at your machine, you're like, I have my tapering stitches and this is grayed out, make sure you check if your width control is on. That one perplexed me too. I had somebody in the master class that asked that and Cheryl knew within five seconds what it was and I didn't even realize because I never used that feature. Okay, so now you can see the tapering stitch is here. So you can select how you want the stitch to start and you have all of these options. So if you're gonna go uh, just from end to end, you could keep your points like that. You can even make that a really longer point. Can you see that pretty closely now? It shows you exactly what it's going to look like. So you have this feature on the Stellaire 2, the Stellaire 2 upgrade and the Luminaire. It's pretty fun. All right, so figure out which way you're going to stitch. So why don't we do 45 degrees? Cause we'll just keep going in a circle. <laughs> that wouldn't be a circle, I guess it'd be a square. All right, and then for my end, what do you want your end to do? Well, we might as well just keep that 45 degree angle going because if I went this way, then I could turn and go this way, then turn and go that way. But those are your options. Now, the next thing you have an option for is either touching the reverse button, which will start the, the tapering, and it'll show you when you hit that reverse how, much, how many more stitches you'll have before it'll end. If you know exactly how much you want. This shows me right here, that's about an inch and a half. See how long we can go. See, as I lengthen this, this number is changing to 3.7. I haven't checked to see if there's a, an end length where it won't go anymore. Oh, that's pretty long, we're at 29 inches, 32 inches, 41 inches. Well, why don't we go ahead and measure how much we want, and that way we'll know exactly. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay, so let's go back to the table and let's measure this. <laughs> I keep hearing the door. Hopefully we don't get a big delivery in the middle of the show today because uh, it's expected today, and that will make you all have a really good laugh for the day. Okay. I think we should do this one. Why not? So how long should we do it? I'd like the tapering stitches to be inside a little bit. So they're more of a decoration. I'm, I chose green thread, so it kind of blends in. Let's see, this way. We could do maybe six inches this way. If I want it to be the same though, hmm. Okay, I have an idea. Why don't we go eight inches this way and six inches this way. And I'll start somewhere in the middle and that way I have plenty of room if I wanna put a backing on it, okay? So eight by six.
take you back to the machine. Cindy, are you supposed to be working? <laughs> All right, so we're at 41 inches. I just want to go eight inches. I won't tell anybody. Okay, now let's go back up to eight inches. I'm looking at that number right there in case you're wondering what I'm staring at. Well, we can go 8.1, 8.1 is fine. Let's go 8.1. Now I can save this stitch. So if I click on memory, close memory, and it will save that stitch. I can also create the stitch for the six inch. So let's go back in here. Let's go six inches here. Well, we got 5.9 or 6.2. Um, we'll just go 6.2. So that's the 6.2, and I can save that to memory. If I want to retrieve those, you can see right in here I clicked Retrieve, and these are my options here. So they're both starting at 45 degrees. We've got the width. We've got the tension. This tells me how many times it repeats. So the 20 repeat would probably be the six inch one because it doesn't, I don't see the inches on here, but I know that that's what it was. And the 26 is probably the eight inch one. Make sense? All right, so we'll click on, hmm. why don't we do the longer one first? You just touch the number and click okay. And I'm just going to slide you over a little bit. Don't get seasick. Bring this up just a little bit. Oop, wrong direction. All right, now you can see this table a little bit better. All right, the new end foot, which if you haven't seen that yet, is really nice. This came out in the Luminaire last year. It has a nice finish. It glides across the fabric. It also has a higher little plastic sides here that go up on the foot. You know, when I'm doing decorative stitches, I never even paid attention before the difference until I got the new end foot. And now you can really tell the difference. If I can get this in, see where I'm going. I'm kind of at a weird angle. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there you go. Help if you put it in the right spot. So we're going to do eight inches. I'm just going to start a little ways in because some of this excess fabric I'm not going to use. You have an option. You can use the foot pedal or I can just use this button right here. So if I want to use this button right here, I have to unplug my foot pedal. And now I can use that. So foot pedal or not, it's your choice. We already know how long it's going to be. So why don't we just use this? I'm using a dark green stitch. Yeah, that's looking cool. So I'm just using my hands to guide the fabric, like just make sure it stays in place. It's basically doing all the work itself. So while we were talking about adding some home deck and different things for our tables, I was thinking the tapering stitch, if you haven't tried it yet, would be absolutely gorgeous on some white linen. Because you could use that all year round. Okay, I'm not touching anything and it finished. So that told me that my eight inches is up. Or did I pick the six inch? I think I picked the six inch. <laughs> I picked number two. All right, well then, let's see. Why don't we just go this way? 
and do another, because this one's shorter. This one's going to have to be six inches. I guess six inches is going to be it. Yeah, number one was the eight inch. I picked number two. <laughs> if I would watch your comments, I'll bet you somebody realized I picked number two. There's too many numbers today. Fabric number one, fabric number two. All right. It looks like I got a little crooked there, but that's probably because I'm really not paying that much attention. I'm trying to read all your comments. But if you wanted to focus, <laughs> you could make that as straight, as straight as you want it to be. How about that? I like this green on there. I might have to go into the decorative stitches and just add a whole bunch of rows of decorative stitching on here. It's stopping. And now we just have one more corner to go. Wow, you know, minus my crooked holding the fabric here, you see how it just doesn't quite line up with that. This is gorgeous. And the length, these are all exactly the same. Let me see if you have any questions before I go to the last little section there. What do you have for me? All right, I just want to know who recognized that I accidentally picked number two for the eight inch. Oh, well, that just means I have to make more napkins. I'm just curious. No, I picked it. I accidentally picked the wrong one. <laughs> oh, Patty says the Stellaro owners are in love. Well, I'm glad because I know the last few years you guys were like, we need something. Oh, yeah, I could turn the laser. Now, the grid, Doris, the grid is on the Luminaire. There's a laser light on this one that you could use if you wanted to. Yeah, I like the corners, too. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> I love that, Julie. Mind blown. I definitely, Julie, I agree. If you want an exact length, because I'm also going to show how to use it where you press the reverse button, but when you have it where you can stitch and, and like it's hands-free. Now, if I wasn't leaning over a camera and not paying attention, I could have lined that up just right. So you want to know where the laser light is. I'll show you that. Uh, I see. Oh, hey, Caroline. Uh, by the way, I love your bags. I saw both of her bags. I shared it on Instagram yesterday. If you missed that, she's got another one too. Um, yeah. So you got to play with that. It's very fun. Oh, you're welcome, Colleen. So these two weeks, this week and next week, I'm giving you little tutorials on the Stellaire. Yes, it's new. Some of you still have the Dream Machine, the Dream Weaver. Those are fantastic too. So hopefully I'm giving you enough inspiration ideas that you can sew something too. That's the whole idea. Uh, Ellen, this machine, oh, the app. The app or the machine? So the tapering stitch is on the Stellaire 2 or the Luminaire 3 or the Luminaire upgrade or the Stellaire upgrade, either of those. The Artspira app is on your phone. All right, let's head back. Let's finish some of this up. And Patty, you are so right. I'm going to be addicted to quilting here pretty soon. I'm just loving all the colors, designing your own fabrics. Oh, 
We'll do a few more rows. One where we don't count our stitches and one where we use the laser light as well. So I'm going to try to line it up over here. So I'm going to be a little cockeyed here just to try to line it up visually myself since I wasn't paying attention to the lines on the fabric. We'll give this napkin to Lucy. Lucy's the dog. <laughs> She'll never notice. She, if I put a little squeaker toy inside of it, she definitely won't notice because she'll have the thing ripped up in 5,000 pieces in no time. Look at that. Holy cow. Okay, I even shocked myself on this one. Look at that corner. Look at that corner. And look at that corner. I'm going to make it a little brighter and bring you a little closer. Even with my crooked holding the fabric. You see right here? Maybe under here. It's kind of dark green. Oh, I got a better idea. Look at the back side. Again, if you were using a white linen or something, look at how beautiful this is. And then this corner. And then that's the corner that I started and ended the entire process with. That even includes my little crookedness and it looks wonderful. Those 45 degree angles are absolutely gorgeous. Now, if you're on the luminaire, you have the grid that shows you the 45 degree angles. And if you're on the still air, oops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to make you that dark. Let me show you another thing with this. This. Ooh, don't get dizzy, but I have to move you. All right, here you go. So on here, uh, let's pick a different stitch. How about this one? And this time, I love how those things, they're like snowflakes. No. Nah. There are a lot of cool stitches in here. Any of these would match my fabric beautifully. Okay, how about the flowers? And now click on the tapering. This time, why don't we just do a nice straight line? I want a nice point at the beginning. Notice how it, the beginning has the flowers a little smaller. And at the end, we'll do a nice long one as well. Kind of like a little, just a decoration to go right down the middle, right? All right, click OK. And this time, we're going to use the feature right here where I have to push in on this button right here. And when I push on it, it will show me how many stitches I have left. And you know what? It's totally correct what someone mentioned, that if you want it to be exact, you want to use this because it tells you exactly or approximately how long it's going to be, and all four of your lines will be the same. If you want to just stitch and you know when you want it to end, then you can use this feature here. And if you look at this blue part right here, see where it's kind of a lighter blue? When you start to hit your reverse button, that's how many stitches you have left to finish. So don't think you're going to be able to hit that reverse button and you're going to only have two stitches left. It doesn't work that way. All right, and while we're over here, we'll go ahead and click the laser light. Oops, let me click close. There's the laser light. And I can place where I, how, where I want that. So if I would have done that, thanks everyone for the reminder, I could have lined that up with one of the lines. So why don't we do that now? All right, so close your eyes for a sec. I'll bring you back over. And you can just barely, can you see the red on my finger? Barely there, but it's there. See it now on the white. So this time I'm going to line this up with 
I'll bring you a little closer. You might be able to see it. Sometimes the laser lights are really hard to see on camera, but can you see that? You can see it on my finger. Can you see it on the fabric here? There it is. Goes out quite far. So I'm going to move this just for the fun of it. I'm moving the laser light over to the left. And I'll line up my laser light with this line here. So I'm not even going to watch where my needle is. I'm only watching this laser light here. If you've never used that and you have that on your machine, now that's on the Dream Machine, the Dream Weaver, and a few other things as well. So I think it's the Dream Weaver. I know the Dream Machine. Uh, so this laser light, you can sit back in your chair instead of leaning close up. And I know this because when they first came out with this, I was thinking, I really don't need that. Because I sewed all the time. I designed clothes. I sewed 10 hours a day. I could sew a straight line in my sleep. But I'll tell you what, this laser light is so nice because now I will sit back and I'll even just give you like a little <laughs> glimpse here so you guys can see it good. So when the laser light came out, instead of leaning forward and sewing, which was my habit <laughs> of doing, which is terrible posture, by the way, but if that's what I, how I always sewed. So when the laser light came out, I could actually sit back. It took a little bit for me to get used to because I was so used to staring at the needle. You sit back and you're watching that laser light and now you're just watching it sew instead of down here staring at the needle. I hardly ever look at the needle anymore, except when I'm trying to get that placement when I put it in. So I would love to know in the comments while I go to sew this, if you have the laser light on your machine and do you use it? And what is your favorite thing to sew when you're using it? So my favorite off the top of my head is doing top stitching. When I'm top stitching a garment or a jacket, I can line that laser light up right with that seam and get a perfect 1 8 inch straight line. Of course, I could use a foot for that too. But the next part I like about it is because then I can do rows of stitching by use, moving that laser light around. So let us know in the comments while I go sew. All right. <laughs> I know, Julie, it's approximately. <laughs> oh, Ellen. <laughs> but you had the dream machine, which is a dream. That machine is, was, that was always my favorite. Always, always. But, you know, you got to go on with technology. So you still have a fabulous machine, Ellen. Absolutely fabulous. Thanks, Patty. All right, I think I got any questions. We'll go back and sew that. <laughs> hey, Zena. <laughs> oh, I love your bag too, by the way. I'll be sharing it on social for you. <laughs> oh, a lot of you have it. Oh, thanks, Maggie. I was thinking it was on the Dreamweaver, but I wasn't positive. Sometimes the names kind of blend together after all these years. Uh, Kathy has it. <laughs> I love that, Sandra. Well, some people have been sewing a long time and they still sew with it, right? All right, so let's go back and check this out. Oh, yeah, you can see that line pretty good from there. I'm on the other side of the room, so I couldn't really tell. I rely on all of you. So see it on my fingers? All right, well, let's give it a go. So this time, I'll still use the green button. So I'm not using the foot pedal. I'm just lining up the laser light with that straight line, which would have been brilliant in the first place. Should have asked the brother fans for little tips before I got started. I was so excited about the, the box that I picked the wrong stitch length and I forgot the laser light. So I'm sitting way back here just watching this go. I mean, this is about as easy as it gets. Now, I know that I'm going to need some time to finish this edge. So when I think I'm getting close to the end, I'm going to hit pause just to bring you up so you can see this whole thing here, okay? What I'm doing. All right. And now I'm going to push on this, the reverse button.
I better plug in my foot pedal. I know better. All right, now. So you see what happened there? I really didn't need to stop, but see how long that went? And look at how perfect it is. I'm so used to pressing on my foot pedal that I forget that all you have to do is touch that and look it, it starts tapered, it's all nice, and it ends tapered. But you can see how long that took. So if you wanted to know exactly, I could have measured maybe the four, it looks like there's four at the beginning. And I know you can see it on the backside better, but isn't that beautiful? So just by touching the reverse button, it would tell me to stop. So I'm just gonna do one more stitch here just to show you another variety of how this works. And this time I'll move my laser light to the right and I'm gonna make this one a little shorter just to give you another little preview. So now I move the laser light all the way over here you can probably see it on the white paper a little bit better. It's way over here. I'm going to line that up with right here, and I'll just do a little shorter one now. Uh, maybe, oh, well, there's so many to choose from. We'll start and end on 45 degree angle. All right, this time I'm using the foot pedal. And you have to plug the foot pedal in if you're gonna use it. If you wanna use the green button, you have to unplug the foot pedal. Make sense? All right, we stitched a little bit. Because this one's shorter, only 45 degrees. Now look at how nice that looks. Pretty simple, right? So now I have my fabric, which is all mucked up now, <laughs> but I'm going to use it. Uh, so I need someone want to give me a little tip <laughs> on how to add a squeaky toy. This is definitely going to be the dog's little bag. I think I'm going to put it inside here, make a little pouch for it and add a squeaky toy. So Mike and Amy's dog can go crazy for it. And then they won't even notice all the weird rows of stitching. Yeah. Anybody have a tutorial for that? Or do I just buy a dog squeaky toy and stick it inside there? <laughs> I know. So, hey, Teresa, are you on uh, Instagram or Facebook? So share the pictures of your bag on Instagram and tag Brother Sews and myself. That's the way um, anything that you're working on, any of these. It could be the grocery bag. It could be this project, whatever you want. And... Um, if you're not on Instagram, you can share them on Facebook and tag them. And I also have uh, Angela Wolf Patterns Facebook group where you can, as long as it's like a bag or something that I've shown, you can share it in there too. I know, Patty, it really goes wide. Planning ahead is definitely required. <laughs> Anybody else? Any questions, guys? So now, by the way, if you... Uh, do not have the Stellaire or the Luminaire, and you have any other Brother machine, you can still do fun things like this. And I want to just point a couple fun things out about that. So let's go back to the Stellaire. Because I hate to leave people out, especially when you've already been a loyal Brother fan so long, and you're like, wait, I've got all these great decorative stitches. How do I use them? So your screen will probably look a little different than mine, depending on what machine you have. Go in here. Click OK, and we're going to start from scratch. So if you go on the sewing side, up here, character decorative stitches. Check your machine to see if you have that. There are all of these. You even have where you can make your own stitches. And this goes all the way back many, many years ago. So you can actually make your own stitches on here by clicking. See how I move these arrows? Click set and you'll see it show up here. Go this way, click set. We did this a few years ago and I tried to do a fish. 
it more looked like a fish that maybe got caught, <laughs> but I tried. But you could do a butterfly, so you just click set and make your own stitches on here. Pretty cool, right? Save it to memory, stitch it, whatever you want to do. There's a lot on this screen. All right, I'm going back because I just want to point out the decorative stitches for those that maybe have a brother machine and just a handful of decorative stitches. Go through your stitches and look at some of these. Now that is cool. You can change your width on here. You can change the length. I could see that on a jacket. So let's see what that looks like. We might as well just get the dog napkin all beautiful for Lucy. Again, I can unplug my foot pedal and now see it went green. So I can use this or I can use the foot pedal, whichever one you want. So in this case, if you're going to use one of these stitches, you can actually click a button on the screen that will make it where it finishes that entire stitch before you turn. Which I just pushed it, and I'll bring you over to show you what I just pushed since you didn't see that. It was this button right up here. Right here. Can you see that okay? There's continuous and there's one more stitch. So it ended at the end of the design. So if that's what you have on your machine, you can still make all these beautiful napkins. Let's see what this looked like. See that nice chain? Good thing we got a white background. <laughs> and on the front, it just blends in nicely. So lots to play with. I hope I gave you a lot more inspiration today. And I'm really curious to see some of your items that you make for your table. Yeah. Okay, let me see. I re see my phone. I wonder if it's because I'm on the Wi-Fi. I'm just seeing if that piece printed. If it didn't, I'll have to add it to Instagram right after this. No. I have a feeling it's because I use this Wi-Fi here because it was working fine before I was live with you. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, I'll print it and show you, but this is the one I'm going to print just for the record. Number two. As soon as I get off this live, the Wi-Fi will be freed up and it will probably print like a charm. All right, any questions? So I have a job for you before Tuesday. So next Tuesday and Thursday, we're still doing home decor. I have a few ideas that I've been working on, but if there's something specific you would like to learn or see on the new Stellaire or any of the other fun brother tools I have in the house, let me know because I have a huge basket of, of different projects I've worked on and things like that and I'd love to share with you. And if I know what you wanna see, even better. There you go. Don't forget. Use hashtag Brother Sews, hashtag Angela Wolf. There are both of our websites. If you want to see some of the upcoming live shows, go to uh, Brother Sews. I always post them. We always post them on YouTube and Facebook a week in advance or so, so you'll know who's coming on. And also, I have a lot of live shows, especially on Wednesday. You can go to AngelaWolf.com to find those. I would love for you to join me. Right now, I'm making a quilted, I'm quilting a tweed skirt. It's beautiful. Uh, Colleen, I'm making napkins. Well, that print was just kind of an afterthought. This is the size I was doing the napkins. These are about eight. I think these were about eight by eight. So this is the one that I chalked in on. If you saw the last episode, it would have been episode 382 for brother. Yeah. I'm just making small ones to leave at the table to go with these. Very fun. Oh, Patty, I didn't know there was a book about that. 
Oh, add a small squeaker in the middle to confine the squeaker and poof the rest. <laughs> that sounds good, Patty. That sounds good. Show stitch combo. All right. I can add that to the list. Any other things you guys want? Have you guys tried, by the way, the stepping stitches? Oh, yeah. That one's really cool. Um, am I going to serge the edges? No, I'll probably put a backing on it. Let me see what the back looks like. No, I will probably put an entire piece of fabric on here and sandwich it similar that I did to these, except I'll probably leave the opening on the side and close it up that way. I'll let you know. I'm going to play with it till Tuesday and then I'll let you know. All right, Colleen wants stepping stitches. So I'll, I'll gather my list, and if you're watching the replay, leave your comments what you want to see. I'll add it to the list for next week. All right, everyone? I hope you have a fantastic day. I cannot wait to go print some more fabric once I get off my Wi-Fi here. <laughs> and uh, let's see, it's Thursday, so I will see a lot of you next week on my live shows, and then we'll be back here on the Brother page at noon Eastern. All right, everyone, have a great day, and happy sewing.